Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel Tech Lead and partner at West Vault. And today we are talking about PH5. Why PHP is the best language for beginners to start with. Okay, I got this from a comment on my channel and um, it was asking that someone had learned C and Java and they might take a look at PHP. I would say, hang on, why don't you look at PHP first before Java and C Sharp? And I'll give you the reasons why. Now, before we begin that, don't forget about my uh, Razor Mouse giveaway. It's still over here. Yeah. Still over here. And I'm just waiting for the number of people to get to the, you know, at least 10 or 20 entries before I give that away. It should be happening anytime soon. But anyway, back to the video of five reasons why PHP is an excellent language for beginners. The first reason is that it is not a non-compiling language. Now, what does compiling mean? Compiling means that basically we take the code and then convert it into machine language, right? Or we convert the code into something that's much more uh, accessible. So very, we start with a very high level and then it changes it into something very low level so that the languages can, uh, that the uh, machine can actually read it. Now you'll see this a lot with C Sharp and Java. After you finish your code, you press the button compile and you have to wait a few minutes while that whole thing is turned into machine language. For Java, it's even worse. It gets converted into the Java virtual machine, which allows Java to run on multiple devices. That's why it is an Android system because Android runs Java, Java has virtual machine that can run on multiple devices, be it Mac, OS, uh, Linux, or um, Windows. The bad point about this is that you're gonna spend a lot of time waiting. You'll be waiting for your language to compile, you'll be waiting for everything to run, and this can really slow down the fun of it. Can you imagine driving your car with traffic lights every single uh, 100 meters? It wouldn't be very much fun. Languages like PHP are actually more scripting based. They actually compile on the fly. So they do not need to be compiled into machine code or they get compiled at runtime. So where's the difference is at runtime, these languages will have a little bit of performance drawback because they're getting converted then. While the Java is already in machine learning, uh, machine code and it's ready to go. So the drawback is much slower, much uh, you take more time and beginners definitely, uh, you know, you make more errors. So you're gonna spend a lot of time waiting. So that's the first reason. The second reason is that it is not 100% object oriented. If you look at Java or C or C Sharp, one problem is that these languages are very OO centric, object oriented uh, centric. Object oriented is something for much bigger enterprises. The reason is, it's kind of like if you run a business, right, or a restaurant, you want to have someone who's a dedicated waiter, a dedicated chef, a dedicated um, manager. But what if you run a really small restaurant, you don't have enough work for a dedicated chef, a de manager, and it takes so much time to, you know, code the rules in for object oriented. So you just want one guy and just say, look, just do this, okay? I don't care whether you're the chef, the manager, or the, the server, you know, or I need this done. That's more of a scripting style that's been, uh, that is done. So PHP actually allows you to have both of it, that, that combination blend. And those people who are more, uh, what I would call, hardcore coders, university, theoretical people, they're like, whoa, we prefer OO to stay OO, and we prefer scripting to say scripting. That making OO object-oriented is a lot more difficult. As I said, you have to define the rules of each person. These people do not interact with each other. So imagine if I define a waiter and I suddenly I'm short of a staff, uh, a chef to cook food. I ask him, he says, shows an error down there. I can't do this. That makes your coding much more bigger if you do all oh, there's a lot of rules that have to be defined for beginners you will struggle for this because it just doesn't make sense right you're only trying to make one small thing it's like making a sandwich you don't need to get a chef and why do you need a server you're just going to eat it right there scripting language much more easier that being said 
PHP has got some nice OO that I like to use in components. It's nice and flexible, good enough for beginners to make use of. The third reason is it is web powered. Now, if you have been building software in the last 10 years, you will notice everything is web. Okay, you don't really build any C programs or anything on Windows. So you can get as much fun and functionality by doing using a web software rather than actually a PC software or Mac software or Linux um, downloaded software. As I said, Java, that's more suited towards the downloaded programs. It was built by Sun Microsystems to cover this idea of multiple devices. These days, you can get that functionality right out of the web. So I'll give you a little insight of a story, right? I was, um, from the first year of university, I actually took Java as a language and I didn't do really well in it. I think I, I got 60 something. But the point about it is that I noticed that um, I needed to do some accounting for a little part-time job that I had outside school. And I was wondering why couldn't I do the accounting on the web? Because it seemed very simple. I could input numbers, um, delete pro, uh, buttons, all that kind of stuff. I could have done it on the web. So I took this to my uh, boss at the time and I said, hey, I think I could do a PHP program that did exactly whatever you needed. Same like whatever the Quickens or all these software that you guys were looking at. And at that point of time, right, people hadn't heard about the cloud. They were like, whoa, how can you put an accounting software just on a website, on a browser? This, that's insane, you know? This is big, important, complex uh, stuff. But fast forward now, 2020, if you're watching this video, look, the web powered by uh, JavaScript and PHP is enormously powerful. I cannot believe the kind of stuff that you can do just with this backend scripting language. It was crazy, right? It's not just inserting variables. So beginners will find it a lot easier, a lot more fun to get straight to actually building uh, software using the web interface, the CSS to make your UI rather than having to build it in uh, Java. You'll find it, you know, it's very ugly while you're working on the software. That web base is not only relevant, it's fast, it's very uh, currently very trendy. So that's the third reason. The fourth reason is it is easier, okay? Now, I don't, I'm not a big proponent of this idea of the school of hard knocks that you have to suffer to learn the code. At the end of the day, we are all trying to solve problems. Beginners struggle to put the right validations in place, the right um, code structure, the um, uh, what you call data structure types. But while you're learning this kind of stuff, right, it can be incredibly frustrating as a beginner where your code just doesn't go anywhere because you forgot to de define this kind of stuff, okay? So what I would recommend is that PHP is a lot more forgiving in this area. It can be structured to be very strict, but it's very relaxed, you know? If you can put an integer or a string or a, you know, a concatenated array, you'll see the types are much easier to work with. You can just get straight to you know, rolling out this code without worrying about constraint types. Now this makes it a lot easier for you to push out things and beginners will find a lot of much more fun actually building something out there. So I think it's a lot easier. You'll see a lot of code. People will say it's a lot easier it's versus JavaScript. You don't have to actually change the types uh, that you'll spend a lot of time doing that. It's so much easier to work with. And then the, far, the fifth reason and any reason why you should be doing a language is huge support. Now, don't go and learn a language where it's very hard to get the materials and very few people uh, doing the language or those people are highly qualified people, right? You know, they're already starting as software developers and they're picking a specialized language like Scala or Go or something like this. What you want to do as a beginner is pick a language where there are lots of beginners, lots of hackers out there, and they'll be asking all those questions. Maybe some of them a little bit dumb, some of them really, really basic stuff, but you want those guys asking those questions on Stack Overflow, on any kind of forum, on any kind of stuff, so that you can read these things and solve these problems. As someone who's experienced in the business, I do understand that sometimes we take for granted what we already knew. And uh, it can be very frustrating when you're a beginner just going through that whole process at the start. 
So I would say pick a language that has huge support from a beginner level kind of uh, framework. Okay, so don't pick something where, you know, Java is used by enterprises. They, they address stuff. If you've seen the Java book, so hard to read, very, very boring. At the end of the day, you can just probably do hello world after, you know, uh, 500 lines of code. PHP, so much easier. I see everyone just posting little hacky scripts. They're very fun to work with. They're very easy to use too. Okay, so that's all I have to say about why PHP is the best language in 2021 for beginners. And that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.